Hello, I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. Many students have asked, what are the basic tools that I need to get started in soldering? So what I've done today is I've laid out the basic tools that you're going to be needing to get started in soldering and we'll give you an overview of these and then on later videos we'll go into much more detail on how to be using them. So today we'll just go over those basics so you'll get an idea of what you need to get started. So why don't we take a close look at these. The first thing that you're going to need is a torch. You can start off with one of these inexpensive propane torches. It has a small propane tank at the bottom and then it has the torch at the top. This particular one is a self-starter and it has a little button on it so it'll you can push on that and it'll self-ignite. Some of these don't have uh, the self-igniters. They're just a simple torch that you have to light with a striker. Or some of them even have ones that have hoses on them. And then the torch is at the other end of the hose so you don't have to be handling the tank, which is kind of convenient. Another type of torch is a butane torch. Uh, this is a small butane torch that uses butane gas. It's the type of gas that they use in cigarette lighters. And it comes um, in different sizes. This is a real small one here that I use for soldering small jump rings and small pieces of wire. Uh, and it has a self-starter on it also. This type of torch right here is an acetylene torch and it does not have a self-starter on it and you'll notice that there's a hose attached to it. That hose goes down to the tank that's underneath my bench and this is an acetylene tank. There is no oxygen or air in the tank, it's only acetylene and it has a gauge on the top, goes into the, the torch hose and then goes up to the torch itself. And then the air is actually mixed in right here at the end of the torch uh, underneath that little uh, clamp right there, uh, there's little holes where it introduces the air into the gas and then it'll burn nice and hot. So this is a one fuel torch and it's using settling. Uh, it does not have a self striker on it, so you have to start it by using something and you can use either the old fashioned striker right here. This is a flint and steel striker. You simply squeeze it and it strikes the flint on the little steel in the cup, it produces a spark, and then it'll light your torch. Or you can use the uh, barbecue grill starter. Um, that's kind of convenient also. This torch igniter is really a neat little invention. Uh, inside the base it has a couple batteries and in the middle section here it has like a little spark plug and so soon as you take your torch and you lay it on one of the little buttons around it, uh, it will start producing a little spark in the middle section there and then it'll light your torch. It's really convenient because you don't have to be using your other hand to grab a striker uh, and, and then light your torch with it. The next thing that you're going to be needing is some type of a heat shield to protect your bench. My particular bench is a slate bench that I recovered from a house that was being torn down. So I don't have to worry too much about that particular bench, but many of our benches are wooden and you want to protect them from the heat of the torches. So there are many different types of heat shields that you can purchase from jewelry supply houses. Uh, there's some of the more modern ones like this one here in the back. Uh, then also you can use fire brick to uh, lay on your bench so then you can work on top of that. And then also you can be using some of the soldering blocks uh, that are available. There, and again, there's so many different types of soldering blocks. Uh, this particular one uh, is one that I, I really like. It has little holes in it. You know, take a look at those holes. and. It's kind of a ceramic material on this one and it will reflect the heat back so it doesn't absorb a lot of the heat around as you're trying to solder your pieces. And also with those holes I can put little pins in them and kind of help hold the pieces of jewelry in place. 
Another type of uh, heat shield or a soldering block is the charcoal block. Um, these are big chunks of charcoal that you can kind of carve down into, nestle your pieces down in them and hold them together. Um, you can't really stick pins in them too much because they have a tendency to crack and split on you when you're heating them up, but they're uh, really uh, an, an old standard for jewelry making. These are some of the smaller tools that you're going to be needing for soldering. A wide variety of tweezers from crosslock tweezers. These are some crosslocks right here. And they cross in the middle of the tweezer and then thus they lock. So thus the name crosslock tweezers. This particular one has a wooden handle to it. And then this one out here is a metal crosslock tweezer on a third hand. Third hand is a base that's a little bit on the heavy side with a universal joint on it so it will help hold your pieces in position as you're soldering. Then there's a wide variety of tweezers. These are some of the real fine point tweezers that you can use for picking up pallions of solder, putting them in position. And then also you have a variety of picks uh, the red one here is a titanium pick. Uh, solder will not stick to titanium, and so it's real convenient for you to zoom in on the solder and maneuver it around so it will, won't stick. So when we talk more about soldering, I'll show you how to use this pick. And then the other two are some basic tip, uh, picks. One is the wooden handle one with just a, a real steel pin in it. And then also the other one is an old uh, dental tool. So feel free to go to your dentist and ask him for some old tools and then you can use those also. Then there's solder shears. Uh, get a good pair of solder shears because they'll last forever. This particular uh, stainless steel ones with the uh, little bit of chrome on them. I've had these for almost 40 years. They're great shears. And then you do have the solder. And these uh, are examples of some of the strip solder. They come in different grades. Uh, and we'll be talking about more of those when we get into the actual soldering. They come in easy, medium, and hard. There's a couple other grades too. And they do come in wire shape or wire forms or paste solder also. Then you're going to be needing a flux. This is a, a borax flux, this handy flux. This is just the brand name for the flux. And uh, we'll go into more detail on that later. Don't forget these right here, your safety goggles or if you wear glasses, you're in pretty good shape, but make sure that you do wear a safety goggle because you're working with some acid solutions and heat and you can always have little pieces fly off and hit you in the eye and uh, so you want to be safe. After the soldering procedure is done, you'll have oxides that have built up and harden flux on your pieces and that must be removed. So we can remove it through a process using an acid solution or a pickle solution. There are all different types of pickling solutions. In the old days, you used to be using nitric and sulfuric acid that would uh, take those oxides off, but those are a little bit dangerous, and so they have a lot milder acids anymore. Uh, one of the brand names is called Sparex. Uh, you can get that at any jewelry supply house. Uh, we've also been experimenting with citric acid and vinegars, uh, and those uh, have got some good successes also. It's really good to be using these pickle solutions in a warm state, and they do have pickling pots that you can purchase, but um, I kind of like to be a little bit more frugal, and I'll go to Goodwill and get an old-fashioned crock pot. Make sure that you do get one with a lid on it, and when you put it on the low temperature, it seems to be working pretty much where, where we want the temperature to be for the pickle solution. And then also, uh, you'll see on the top of the pickle pot that I have a copper tong, and these copper tongs are really important. You 
uh, will be taking your pieces in and out of the acid solution or the pickle solution with the copper tongs. You do not want to use steel tongs uh, because it will copper plate all of your pieces of jewelry. So that's a lot of fun. So that's a good overview of the uh, materials that we need and the tools that we need for soldering. I hope this overview has been helpful to you to show you the tools that you need for basic soldering and for setting up your jewelry studios. In future videos, I'll be showing you the soldering techniques that you'll be using and some of the tricks of the trade. So make sure that you do subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.